Ever since human beings invented clothes, a variety of fibers have been discovered or invented to suit changes in time, climate and fashion. Silk is one out of many fabrics that have been in vogue over millennia despite drastic changes in our tastes. Since it was discovered, fine, strong, lustrous silk has been wooing the world. The cultivation of silk and the craft of silk weaving are even more fascinating. We thought it would be interesting to get an insight into the story of a silk thread. Let's begin with the backbone of sericulture, the silkworm. Commercial silk is obtained by cultivating different species of silkworm. The most widely and commercially used species is Bombex mori, native to Asia. Silkworms are soft-bodied, slow-moving and relatively fast-growing insects. Like other insects, silkworms too go through four stages of development – egg, larva, pupa and adult. The larva is a caterpillar. The pupa is what the silkworm changes into after spinning its cocoon before emerging as a moth. Since the silkworm grows so drastically, it must shed its skin four times during its growth. These stages within a stage are called instars. The eggs normally hatch during summers, which coincide with the mulberry tree regaining its leaves after shedding them in winter. Eggs hatch within 25 days depending on the weather, with warmer weather hastening the hatching process. A silkworm's preferred food is white mulberry leaves, though they may eat leaves of other mulberry species as well. Due to the practices of our ancestors, silkworms have become fully dependent on humans. They eat continuously and therefore need to be fed at least twice a day. New hatched silkworms are tiny and feed on young and tender mulberry leaf shoots. The mature silkworms eat more mature leaves. As the pupae continuously eat, the containers get filled up with their excreta. These therefore need to be cleaned periodically. Furthermore, silkworms are prone to diseases. Farmers must maintain a high standard of hygiene for rearing and handling these precious creatures. In addition to this, the containers should be maintained in such a way as to prevent other insects like ants from invading. After 20 to 33 days of constantly munching away mulberry leaves, the silkworms feel the urge to cocoon. At this stage, the silkworms are a pretty sight. They become translucent and acquire a yellowish hue. Just before it begins cocooning, the silkworm excretes a runny fluid to clean out its system. It then oozes a tiny drop of silk for anchoring. Then it goes on to draw one long, continuous filament of silk by swinging its head from side to side. It takes a silkworm around 48 hours to fully complete this process. The result is a perfectly ovate cocoon made of a single continuous strand of silk measuring up to one kilometer in length. After 10 to 14 days of developing inside the chrysalis, the silk moth appears from the cocoon. Silk moths cannot fly due to thousands of years of domestication. They need human assistance in finding a mate and lack fear of potential predators. However, almost immediately after emerging from their cocoons, male silk moths leave their containers in search of a female mate. Olfactory hairs on the male's antennae help them detect pheromones released by the females. It is easy to distinguish between the male and female silk moths due to the slightly larger abdomen of the females. The males also tend to be more active. The average lifespan of silk moths is a paltry 5 to 10 days, even though males generally live longer than their female counterparts. After mating, a female moth will lay between 300 to 500 eggs before dying. 
the male moths, if not too old, continue to search for another mate. Reeling or the process of drawing silk yarn should be started before silk moths emerge from their cocoons. Once the moths emerge, the shell is of no use because the adult emerges by piercing the cocoon shell. To prevent this, cocoons are either dried in a dryer or stifled in steam. This action kills the pupae inside, thereby allowing farmers to obtain more cocoons fit for reeling. Before reeling, the cocoons are processed in hot water at 95 to 97 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. This cooking makes the unwinding easier without breaking the thread. In India, silk is reeled on country-type charkhas or spinning wheels. The silk thus produced is substandard, uneven and carries many slubs. Improved cottage type or large scale basins for the extraction of superior quality fibre have been introduced in recent years. Once the silk is reeled, weavers and tailors put in their creativity, art and labour to create gorgeous drapes and fabrics to cater to the demands of the market. This sums up the story of how your favourite gown or gorgeous sari came into being.